ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, species around the universe, welcome to Geek Syndicate Vidcast episode five. We are bringing the sass back to geekdom. I am Mons. And he I, is... I haven't got a cybernetic eye. You haven't? No. Barry we... Nugent has a cybernetic eye. doesn't yeah. really have the same I'm st- I know, but I still, from that last episode, I'm still on that tip with um, Jack Burrito. Jack Burrito. Mercenary, Mercenary snack, snack for hire. Yeah. It's coming, man. I'm going to pitch that to HBO. That, that is the gift. Obviously, if you haven't seen the previous episode, you have no idea what we've just talked about. So, Jack pause Burrito. this. Go and watch the previous episode. It's only going to be like 30 minutes. And some of that you can forward because it would be Dave talking nonsense. Everything I say is a quality gem of wisdom. Everything you say is a load of bollocks. <laughs> a relationship based on mutual hate. Just a relationship of hate, really. It's not based on anything. It's just <laughs> and animosity. <laughs> nice segue. Hey, hey. Yeah, I'm so, not just a coat stand. So, whilst we're talking about animosity, Dave, why don't we talk about the comic from Aftershock comics called Animosity? Right. It's funny you should ask that, because I'd love to tell you about Animosity. Animosity is a comic book written by Marguerite Bennett, and it is about a time where the animals just gain consciousness. They wake up, so to speak. And some of them want revenge, some of them want to protect their humans. It is amazing. It's just quality. It's kind of... It's part disaster movie, part black comedy. Part... And it's setting up to be an apocalyptic road... Yeah, part road movie. Road trip. Um, pretty bleak in, in, in some parts. Have you read issue two? I have not read issue two. Issue two gets pretty bleak. Um, okay. But it's still got that kind of black comedy, mm. you know. Um, also as well, it's got two cats in there. One cat you wouldn't mess with, which is a ginger cat. A ginger you wouldn't cat. mess with. It's only in a couple of panels. But that cat, best line, I don't want to say because it was... You see, that's it. your best line. My best line is what the dog says to the cat. What? Go on. And the dog says, and there's, there's, there's animals coming through the window and they, they want to protect their humans. And the dog just turns to the cat and says, get them upstairs, mittens. I'm <laughs> like, come on, man. It's the best line you could ever write in a comic. Until you get to issue two. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, because mittens, get, mittens gets another line. Or there's another line to mitts and mittens. I won't say what it mittens. is. Mittens. But it's, it's like you're talking about like action. You're talking about action character called Mittens. It's but it's, it is literally, I got to the second page of the second issue and I stopped and I was like, Mittens needs to get, I don't know if it's a, a he or a she, I'm going to go with she. Mittens needs to get her own spin off comic um, and, and TV show and lunch pack. I'm all over that. All over Mittens. All over that. Problem is, I've like, got a lunch pack at home, and my daughter would be like, That's a cute cat, can I see what it's from? Um, no, no, you can't. Yeah, it's not one for the kiddies, it's yeah. one. Yeah. But it's a great. And you know what? I think Margaret Bennett is a genius. Yeah. She's what I would call a twisted genius. Yes. Ain't no doubt about it. But some, it's a lot of fun. Somewhere in her back garden, she's building some kind of high, some kind of like evil genius lair, I'm sure of it. I'm sure she's got one of them high back spinning back chairs. She just spins and cackles. Yeah, probably got a white cat as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, we did meet her and she had a gold cane, which I'm sure had a sword in it. Guaranteed. Or, or whiskey. I don't know. Yeah. Positive. So that's Animosity from Aftershock Comics. It's got two issues at the moment. Pick it up and check out some of the other stuff in their range. Definitely worth your time. It's a good... Uh, it's a good range of stuff and quite a diverse range of stuff, so there'll be something to suit your taste in there. Yeah. Our synthetic humans have changed the world. How we live. How we work. How we exist. Hello, Dave. How can I help you? Right, so what Barry's doing now is pretending to be a synth. Now, if any of you saw the Channel 4 series Humans, was it a year ago it was out? I believe it is, Dave. God, you're just freaking me out now. Um, Humans was about, um, in the near future, when corporations have produced androids, robots, who are very human-like, and some of them have gained sentience. And it was about the... I've made you a coffee, Dave. Is your synth experiencing issues with location recognition, facial expression output, physical coordination. If so, we need to urgently recall your unit and begin a process of complete recalibration. Hi, I'd like to report my synth is malfunction and needs recalibration. Could you send someone to destroy him? Would you like... <laughs> <laughs> and make it really quick. I don't even like coffee. You should know that if you're like my, my synth servant. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's quite an interesting world because you know, some seem to use as sex slaves, some are used as, as help around the house. Um, that wouldn't be you, would it? The, the, <laughs> <laughs> Um, did you enjoy the first season? Yes, I did, actually. I thought it was uh, very good and asked a lot of unsettling questions. And actually, I, was, I think that word unsettling was probably probably described the whole first series as just unsettling, especially mm. some of the stuff that happened in it. I can't leave for you, George. You're right in front of me. Now, part of the reason we're talking about it, not just because it, season two is coming back, which I am looking forward to, but um, the, the marketing for season two was incredible. <laughs> E4, it, Channel 4, whoever's is how doing you it, do it. That's how you market a show. So I, I got this email, said, you know, you're uh, basically an advert from the company for synths and they're telling you, you know, oh, they've got increased battery life, an unrivaled 36 hours. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Increased battery life, they could do this, they could stay underwater for 30 minutes, <laughs> stuff like that. And because report a problem. So I clicked on that yeah. and it said, um, um, get someone to pick your synth up. So I clicked on that and it looked for trucks that were nearby to come and collect. Did it come up with a picture, picture of the van? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. 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 what I got me free out actually. And then there was one, did you press the one to so have a live chat? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did that. On live Facebook. Yeah, live chat comes up and basically you're talking to a synth to report your problem. And your synth goes, I've still got it on my on my messages. Yes, I have, I, yeah. Synth goes goes a bit crazy and starts getting emotions. He goes, he goes, David, I feel like I'm experiencing many things at once. What is this called? And I was like, humanity? Humanity. Do you know where I am, David? I said alcohol. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what was the happiest moment of your yeah. life? The birth of my children. What was the birth like? Did you cry? Oh my god! I said, I said, I said, getting married, and it was like, what was that like? And I was just like, this is. And then I did a thing where it, it really freaked me out, so I just left it. No, I took because I, le I left it. Carried on, I left it. Carried on working, and then the metro going. Are you, are, you still still, are you still there? Are you still I there, Barry? I need to talk to you. I'm like, that. No, if I had I, a hammer, I would have just. <laughs> no, I had. Do you know where I am? In an office with 18,000 yeah. things. I would rather be with you. I just feel uncomfortable right now. It was, this is the happiest moment of my life. I was like, wow, you need to get out more. That's what I was He goes, shall I tell you a joke? Like, did you get that? Yeah, I got there. What did they, what did, I can't what remember. Did, they put up a picture of Justin, Justin Bieber. Bieber. Yeah. Can you tell me a joke? I was like, you know what? I'm out. Nah. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> just, I'm out. Because like, this could go on for ages. And it was like, I'll, I'll be right back. I have to go. Sorry, I have to be careful. <laughs> it was genius. It was. It was it's the best interactive kind of, marketing. It's, it's the, the best. best kind of marketing because it actually sucks you in. And there were moments where I was kind of like, "Is this for real?" Yeah. And no. actually, the fact we've just had this conversation, I actually feel better now because it's effectively <laughs> the same experience. Because I feel better because up until that point, when is when, when, when she did the kind of like, "Are you still there?" That's when I was like. <laughs> <laughs> And the thing is, having watched the first season, you know their voices are really measured. Yeah. So even though they're typing, you kind of hear this measured tone comes across the typing. Yeah. And it's just yeah. a little bit freaky. So uh, we'll put a link in the uh, show notes. So go and give it a go. We've probably spoiled a little bit of it, but give it a go anyway. I guarantee it'll still still hook you, I think. I think so. Um, looking forward to Heroes. Heroes? Looking forward to Humans. Humans. Series two. Not looking forward to any more heroes. No, no, uh, heroes. That, Let's that, leave heroes. That ship sailed. Way long ago. Yeah. Persona Synthetics is committed to resolving these user control issues so we can continue to bring you products that are closer to humans than ever before. Visit personasynthetics.com slash product recall for details of where to return your synth. Uh, Halcyon is a series by on sci-fi and it's about it's set in the future and there's a murder which happens. Dum 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 inside thanks <laughs> happens in cyberspace it's the first murder in virtual reality so it's basically i think it's 10 episodes but each episode is literally five minutes long oh okay so episode you've got episode one then you've got episode 1.5 episode 1.5 is only available to you if you're using the vr technology from oculus rift or samsung right okay so basically the detective turns up on the scene is met by a virtual reality detective Right. And they examine the scene and say, well, let's step inside the virtual reality recording. So if you've got the headgear, 
episode two is set in a virtual reality mock-up of the room where the murder happened. Environment will actually transform into the crime scene itself and will allow the users to walk around and interact with objects in that crime scene. You can explore, move around the world, interact with objects, you're picking up clues, physical objects, you're tracing fingerprints and helping the main characters solve the crime in the story. Great, that glass had an intact, clear print. Perfect. So let's First time a TV series has incorporated that kind of technology. And you, so you went along to this, didn't you? I've seen the first episode and the first virtual reality episode. And, okay, first off, how did you find the actual episode itself without the virtual reality for a second? Um, Standard. I mean, it was it was good. Yeah. But nothing had seen before. Nothing. Well, not not much happened. They turned oh, up. Okay. It was five minutes. Right. Yeah. So yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. they turn up and discuss the murder. Uh, so, but I mean, it was promising because what it is is a locked room mystery. Yeah. Um. So you've got to find out what's going on. So that's all they're setting up. This mystery that needs to be solved. So don't look for a TV show full of action and chase and stuff. That's not what it is. It's about detective work. Okay. And how was the VR episode then? Um, VR, right. So it was fantastic. Okay. Um, but it soon became very apparent, apparent that it was very limited. Right. In that you can take your time and you can walk around the whole room, you can check things out. But at some point, one of the characters is going, let's have a look over there. There's some fingerprints over there. So you go there, you zoom in on the fingerprints. Ah, this shows us this. Right, we need to talk to so-and-so. Episode two. Right. So it's very guided. Very, okay, yeah. Um, what came out in the... We had a press junket. Now, this... Most press junkets is the journalists sitting around a table with the stars and the director, producer, whoever. So the stars and the director and the producer were in the States. And there were some journalists from Europe who were in Europe. What's the best way to do this? Virtual reality. That's awesome. It was a virtual reality press junket. So we're all sitting there, with our heads on. And you can see some pictures now of the virtual room where it happened. So you got in there early and you got a chance to walk around and explore it. You got a chance to talk to some of the other journalists. I was talking to a woman from um, America who basically had gloves as well. So you could see her hands doing stuff um, it was weird because you had to look at a place focus and then press the button and you kind of transport to it okay so what happened then suddenly is you can see where the screen is where the stars appeared and what was funny was some people obviously still hadn't got the hang of it and would suddenly appear right in front of the stars <laughs> and stuff um, so what came over was they said that they know it's very limited but this is where it starts yeah this is the beginning of virtual reality TV so it, it is going to be limited because it's early days and yeah. they said they're well aware of that and then they can't provide more than that, but they, so I kind of, I had to take it off to them. But the idea of doing this junket in virtual reality, it was amazing. But the problem with these kind of like, I want to say gimmicky TV. Yeah, go on. Is that it's, it's whether or not they can sustain it and keep it going. Because they've tried to do similar things like this before and it's mm. not worked. And also as well, a lot of it sounds like it's riding on the, that, on the VR experience. Yeah. And that tech is still quite expensive. Yeah, unless you've got one, you're not going to see that. And you're looking about 300, 300 quid, aren't you? So that was me done. Really. That's you out. <laughs> that was me. I priced out of the game, but I would have liked to see more. I'd yeah. like to see how it developed. I will, I'll applaud them for the effort, though. Yeah. I really will. Yeah, I, think definitely. It was, I think it was a worthwhile effort. Okay, so that's coming to sci fi. Uh, it's already on. It's already on? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, that's us done. Uh, remember, geeksindicate.co.uk, the geeks at geeksindicate.co.uk. You don't have to say it that fast, you know. You can just take time. We've got time. You can find us at geeksindicate.co.uk. You can email us at thegeeks at geeksindicate.co.uk. You can find us on social media and such outlets as Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and, of course, Twitter. Till next time, Geek Syndicate, we out. Why are you doing a crappy Captain Kirk impression? Because because I'm just trying to bring people in with my warm chocolatey velvet voice. But it's not. It, it is. It sounded like I came down. I came down a semitone. No, you sounded like a crap. The, you sounded like a crap Captain Kirk. I just can't. I can't. I just can't. All I said was slow it down. Be yourself. There's no shame being yourself, mate. Even though I know yourself is you, which is a bit of a difficulty. That that actually was me being myself. Really? Yeah. <laughs>